China versus Taiwan. I wonder how that's going to work out. That's what it'll be about today. So if you uh, like the video, please do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. It really makes an amazing amount of difference. And thank you very much for watching. Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So yeah, it is very interesting. I mean, Taiwan has been existing in a sort of alternate universe from uh, China. So we'll ask uh, Aries, uh, Aries Rainbow Child's question. What about China versus Taiwan? What's going to happen there? You know, it's always good to have a little information. And so I wikied this situation, of course. And here's uh, what I got. So what is driving China's warnings to the United States over Taiwan? An ambassador to the U.S. said, uh, uh, the Chinese ambassador to the U.S. said that they were moving towards independence with U.S. help. Okay, that, that could involve China and the United States in military conflict. This isn't the only time that China has warned the U.S. about Taiwan, but the talk of military conflict was unusually explicit. Taiwan is a self-governed democracy off the coast of China, which uh, China claims as its own. The U.S. no longer treats uh, Taiwan as a sovereign nation, but has supported it. And the ambassador's warning sent a signal that U.S. current atmosphere of support for Taiwan could cost America uh, very uh, dearly. If we encourage Taiwan to think they have a future without total control by China, that will lead to war and, uh, and like I said, cost Americans dearly. Um, the United States kept Taiwan's status ambiguous uh, since the 1970s, and so things have been okay. But if you're uh, Xi Jinping, and I hope I pronounced that right, in Beijing, every year you get militarily stronger and confident and wait a bit in case war wouldn't go in China's favor. Then every year in Taiwanese hearts and minds, it seems horrifying and weird uh, being controlled uh, by China. But China is fearful of Taiwan getting away. Look at what they did in 2019 in Hong Kong. Losing patience with protests, they crushed them with extreme uh, ruthlessness. And uh, Taiwan would be much harder though. It's across a hundred miles of rough sea. It's an uh, ambitious, amphibious landing. But if um, you know China allowed Taiwan to drift away, um, then the leader of China would be considered uh, a traitor to Chinese history. And uh, it's like this is the unfinished business of the end of the Chinese Civil War. Uh, Mao uh, drove them into Taiwan. And so to complete the victory of Mao, then you have to one day take Taiwan back. And that is historic history, uh, the historical force at work. So it's, it's very similar to what's happening in Russia. Would they believe that all those uh, countries, Ukraine, uh, really belong to them? Let's see what happens in the cards. Okay, so... Um, this is another viewer question. Aries Rainbow Child asks, uh, what about China versus Taiwan? What can the cards tell us about that? China versus Taiwan. What can the cards let us know about that situation? Thank you, Aries uh, Rainbow Child. Cool man. Aries Rainbow Child, like that. So, what can the cards let us know about China versus Taiwan? China versus Taiwan. This will be another full uh, Celtic cross. We'll start out with six cards, and only if it seems very obvious that we've come to an end of the answer will we stop with that first six. The first six being a dyadic cross. And if we need to go further, we'll do the last four cards. It makes a full Celtic cross. But first, let's have a moment of meditation. That's all it takes. So, China versus Taiwan, what's going to happen there? China versus Taiwan, what's going to happen in that situation? China versus Taiwan, what can the cards let us know about that? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, and six. China versus Taiwan. Help us out, cards. Help us understand. China versus Taiwan. 
trying to make sure I keep looking at the camera. I know it's more interesting if I'm looking at you and you can see me interact with you than if I just have my head down. Okay, signified card, China versus Taiwan. Seven of Swords. Oh, yeah. So, Seven of Swords is... Um, I'm going to look it up because I don't want to get it wrong. Seven of Swords. Uh, yeah, Death Betrayal. Ah. So, Seven of Swords. Yeah, it's um, Death and Betrayal. Simply that. Well, perfect, perfect. You know, as we learned, uh, Taiwan's been living kind of a f uh, free uh, existence when they belong to China. So theft and betrayal is a signifier. China versus Taiwan. The challenge to that is a six of staves and the six of or the six of wands. And the six of wands is um, wow. My mind's a blank today. Um, let's see, six of wands. Oh yeah. Celebrations. Okay, Six of Wands is achievement, um, travel, uh, getting things right. So this Seven of Swords, this theft and betrayal, is challenged by um, celebrations, achievement. Taiwan has been very successful in the uh, way they've been um, existing. The base of this reading, then, with this Knight of Coins, again, like I always, always tell you, coins are value, can be money, and the Knight is the uh, person of the royal uh, entourage who's going to fight for that value. This is Taiwan. The past of this reading with the Three of Cups. Yeah, this is uh, celebrations. Cups are emotional, compassionate. Uh, three of Cups is celebrations. So we hope that this is uh, what uh, is uh, been happening, uh, the, the celebration of the value of that country. The sky of this reading, uh, the universe, complete end of a cycle. So what does this mean in the sky? Is this telling us we're at the end of the cycle for Taiwan to uh, be enjoying, uh, enjoy the freedom that they've had? Uh, is this the end of the cycle of China uh, aggression, uh, although it's been kind of passive aggressive uh, towards, towards Taiwan? We're hoping China doesn't take the uh, example of Putin in this Ukraine thing, which of course is a disaster. The likely outcome of the first part of this is uh, this Three of Swords, and the Three of Swords is a broken heart. The Three of Swords are uh, truth, justice, rules, and law. And the Three of Swords is just a difficult uh, reckoning uh, of that. Man. So the um, last four cards, because we can't stop there. So China versus Taiwan. What can the cards tell us about what's happening and what will happen? Four cards to finish up. First one being the very self of that question is the devil. Ill intention, greed, and being chained to that. Who's that, do you think? The environment that that's in is the Four of Wands. And the Four of Wands are typically smallish celebrations. Wands are actions, plans, forward movement. The Four of Wands typically uh, represents um, some sort of a celebratory victory. And for me, it's a smaller celebration towards something larger. So maybe this can mean there's a break in a negotiation. Notice that this uh, uh, wizened uh, performer here is balancing these two wands on just on the ends of these two wands. I mean, that's a delicate uh, balance and could be a very delicate celebration. The hopes and the fears for that. Magician, yeah, that we find the perfect magical mix of everything that we need uh, to get this uh, uh, this thing resolved in a, in a suitable manner for everybody involved. The likely outcome of China versus Taiwan. Okay, this is the uh, Ace of Staves, the Ace of Wands, a big plan. So, yeah, it looks like there will be some sort of a plan um, towards that end, I would say. And for me, this it means some sort of a reconciliation, maybe less freedom than Taiwan wanted, but uh, more freedom than China wanted, perhaps. So we'll read it again. Okay, and the question is, what about China versus Taiwan? And we start out with the Seven of Swords, Theft and Betrayal. I mean, couldn't be more obvious. Challenged by what? Uh, victories. Challenged by victories, um, you know, finding a happy victory and all of that. Wow. Uh, the base of this reading is this Knight of Coins. This has to be Taiwan fighting for the value. In the past, this reading with this Three of Cups is uh, there was, you know, that's what this is. There was a, a, a happy uh, understanding between China and Taiwan for some time. Uh, so that's the past. And the universe of this is the end of a cycle. Something's coming to a close here. Is it the way uh, Taiwan was existing? Is it the way China was accepting that existence? Something's coming to a close. And the likely outcome of this whole thing with the Three of Swords is uh, disappointment. You know, there's going to be disappointment. 
could be a compromise that neither uh, party is completely happy with, perhaps. And then uh, the, the very self of that question, what about China versus Taiwan, is the devil card, you know, ill intentions, uh, being chained to that. That has to be China. And then the um, environment that that's in is, is some smallish celebration of moving forward, of a plan to go ahead towards something larger. And the uh, hopes and the fears for that with this magician is finding that perfect magical mix of all the tools you need to get this uh, act uh, off the road, or on the road rather. And then the uh, uh, likely outcome of the whole thing is this big ace of staves, this plan, this big plan. And so hopefully that's what we come to an agreement. Well, I do record these videos in advance of when they actually air, so we'll see how timely this one is and, uh, and whether uh, the predictions need to be going in the direction that we have here. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. So this is the Chinese tarot deck by, I don't know how to pronounce this, Wei Gulang. Perhaps you can see it there and make your own determination as to how to pronounce it. But this is by U.S. Games Systems. And uh, I've had these cards for a bit, and I've been uh, playing with them. And so I thought I'd just um, show you uh, what we've got here. So they come in just a typical, uh, you know, little box. It's not anything to speak of, really. And um, the um, the inserts in here are, again, what you typically find with cards. And the, the deck, the uh, instruction pamphlet, is just uh, a typical little uh, instruction pamphlet with the typical uh, suggestions in one language as to how to divide the cards. So, there. And... Um, but the cards themselves are pretty cool. I've enjoyed using them, and they're not hard to uh, interpret. Now, this is a really neat design on the back. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got like a warrior here with their hands outstretched, and then all this going on, and another warrior upside down here. So that's the back. But then the cards themselves are really beautiful. They're good size, and uh, the art is interesting, and they're very easy to read, uh, even though they don't have the typical little uh, signals that um, a lot of cards give you as to what this means and what that means and you know you know what I mean so there we go so this is the uh, the Chinese tarot deck and you know I like to spread them out like this for two reasons one if you're working with somebody you can let them uh, kind of spread them out this way if they're not com comfortable with shuffling and you really want them to get involved with all the cards and two um, you know when I was just uh, looking at uh, readers online, I always wondered, what does the rest of the deck look like besides what I got to see in just this short little presentation? So this is the Chinese tarot deck, and I like it. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.